Welcome, Sandy, and welcome, Annie. Uh, start video. There we go. Welcome. Here I am. Lighting looks good, Annie. Um, oh, good. There's David and Laura. Um, uh, so, Annie, I am making you uh, the co-host, um, which really, you know, just means that you've got you know control over things as well as I do. Um, I will pretty much. Uh, at the beginning, kind of control muting people and unmuting people other than yourself. You'll always be unmuted. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll wait for a couple minutes. I always like, um, as people are coming in, to kind of ask people what they're looking for, what they want to experience tonight. That's always been a nice thing to do. And, okay. Uh, Emily is right here. You can say a quick hi to her. Hi. Um, I've got my earphones on though, because uh, Emily is actually doing a session and has uh, some things going on. So it's going to be pretty much just me, but Emily will be watching and listening in a little bit. Okay. Hello, hello David and Laura. How are you guys doing? I'm unmuting you so you can respond, although I see that you're eating. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, we're good. How's uh, Karen making out with the death of her, uh, of her mom? You know, it's, it's been, um, it's been interesting because, you know, her dad passed away last year mm -hmm. and six months ago. And then that was at the time that they wanted to do relationship essentials. Right. And, uh, so the parents have been together, you know, since they were kids. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised that the mom let go, you know, it's eight months later yeah. and, uh, she did have brain cancer mm. and it was so interesting because her dad only when the mom was sick and going through brain cancer, um, then the dad just all of a sudden one day, like something weird happened with his heart or something. And then all, next thing we know, he's in the hospital and then he passes away within like two weeks. Wow. So he was just taking Karen's mom, you know, to the doctors and stuff. Um, so it's just been an interesting journey, but um, yeah, so we're just having maximum grace for Karen. Yeah, God's blessing, sir. Well, if there's anything, if at some point, you think she'd yes. like for us to give her some love or some empathy, let us know, okay? Okay, I definitely will, because I know they want to take the course when, when she yeah. gets Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Well, maybe maybe they'll be ready to take it when we start it up in June. Hello, Lee. Yeah. Good to see you. Lee, you look very serious. Can you hear us? Lee Garrett, can you hear us? I'm guessing, not. I'm guessing not. Um, uh, I'm going to try sending a little chat. Um, you can. Okay, you can hear us now, Lee. Okay, great, cool. Annie, are you? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling good. Oh, good, 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 good. Hang on, I'm gonna grab my uh, juice. I just did some squeeze juice, hang on. Okay, uh, yeah, if everyone can check, because uh, what I wanna do is, uh, if you have a, a pencil and paper, you might wanna write stuff down and uh, make sure that you know how to do the, the Zoom group chat. I have uh, an experiment that has uh, people typing in things. Like a, as a um, as a brainstorming. So if you can send a, a group chat thing, then uh, that would be great. Make sure that we have everything set.
It's not so I'm looking at thing six. Gotta give these guys credit. Yay, thank you. All right. <clears throat> maybe uh, we could wait maybe just a couple more minutes. It's 731 right now. See who else might join us. Um, Lee, I'm going to unmute you just so you can say hello and kind of share a little bit about how you're doing. Give us yeah. a chance to connect in. Hello, I'm unmuted then. You are. We can hear you. Well, it's great to see you, Scott, and I'm looking forward to experiencing Annie. I don't think I've met Annie before. I don't think so. And uh, I am doing really well today. I've gone through a, a, a sale of a property that has been something that's felt like a burden on my shoulders for a long time because it was the vision of myself when I was much younger to get involved in this. And so I've gone through a process of visioning and identifying my principles and my values and trying to check and see if my vision of 25 years ago is still intact today. And I realized that I've, I'm not serving it anymore by doing that. So this is much more in alignment with my vision is to be with people and to be uh, practicing my relating and uh, being with people in places of empathy and understanding and, and celebrating the beautiful communication that we have available to us and honoring my teachers. Uh, Scott is one of my teachers, and every time I say it, I start to cry. <laughs> I love you, Scott. You know. I love you too, Lee, and I yeah. see you. You're, you're, we're peers, absolute peers. You're a beautiful, beautiful soul, and I'm always honored to have you with us. Really, really, I have a lot of love for you too. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you, how, doing. how's your brother doing? Uh, he's doing uh, very well. He's still in Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fellow that you had counseled, uh, you know, the two of them, they're still friends and they're not partners. It's been a while. Last time I talked to your brother, he was dipping his toes into politics. Yeah, but it's more campaigning for things that were meaningful to him, yeah. like uh, you know, environmental types of things. And, and so, uh, but yeah, I'm sure he would love to hear you. And um, I don't know if he's even aware that these yeah, we should let him know. I'd love, I'd love to see him on this. We need to get the, the word out more effectively to people for sure. Yeah. Well, if you talk to him, give him my love. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Scott. And I'm just noticing for myself that as a practice for me is to actually to see the other people on the chat because I can find myself talking to, for instance, you as one person and missing Laura and her partner here. Oh, uh, so, so do you know how to put it on gallery view? I do. I'm just noticing my awareness that I'm here with a group and I was, it's, it's a different experience to be in a chat like this and it's almost a practice to make sure that I'm taking in the fact that we're all here and not just zoom in on one TV screen. Mm -hmm. So it's a practice I'm noticing for myself it's new. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that before. I just, I just in this moment realized that I was tunnel visioning with you and that means that I'm missing the others. Well, thank you, Rod. To be honest, I was kind of stalling for time so that Laura and David could finish eating their dinner. No problem. Could wait to see if somebody else is coming in. Not just stalling, I wanted to connect with you too. But also uh -oh. um, give Annie a, a chance. And Annie, I think it's time to turn it over to you. You're the boss. Yeah, well, we have a, it can be a dinner meeting. I think that would be pretty fun if everybody had their, their food and, and a candle out. Yes? Cool. I get my water. There we go. Yeah. I got my two. <laughs> All right. Well, take it away, Annie. Would you like to mute me, Scott? Sure. Well, you know, I think it, that it, there's it, uh, so few of us uh, that uh, we can unmute everybody and just have an actual conversation. Okay, David, you have to go in the next room. I love that idea, and I want to make sure we cross talk. I want to make sure I'm not feeding back or something because I'm learning about this technology, and I don't know when when the mic is off for me as well as others if. And it speaks or if that speaks if it's resonance back to the others. I don't, I'm, I'm curious about feedback, what that might be like for the others. Yeah, there's, a, there's actually not a feedback issue usually, um, especially if you've got earphones in. Um, uh, you know, Zoom has created it so theoretically anybody can talk at any time. The key is just to keep background noise 
uh, down. So often if somebody's at a cafeteria or they've got something going on, um, uh, then all that noise will be for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's amazing. So Scott and Annie, your sounds are not feeding back through my computer to you. Mm -hmm. No. And when you have the uh, uh, one, you know, the, the one on one, whoever is talking gets to be the big screen. I haven't experienced that one yet. I'm excited. <laughs> Well, yeah, try it. If you put it on the, uh, the single screen, then uh, you'll see that effect. It'll look like uh, you're talking. They'll have uh, the picture of, of just you, small. Or when I do it, I remember, there's a picture of me that's small in the corner. And then uh, the person who's talking is big. And when someone else talks, then they're big. Now, if, I was, if I was to ask you, Annie, to initiate single screen mode, what would I do? To initiate single screen? Oh, I don't know. For me, it's the, the top right where it says mute and uh, it's called spotlight video. Wow, so I see you as the big one now. Right. Very cool. And I just recently, not pretending to be uncomfortable, not uncomfortable with that. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous because this is my first uh, uh, time with uh, leading the uh, Love Coach Academy uh, practice group. And uh, uh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really nervous and I love that. Um, and we love it and we love you for loving it thank you thank you <laughs> very cool and I, I haven't found spotlight video yet and I don't want to slow everybody down in my learning curve but so it, yeah on on the computer screen for me it was on the top right you see gallery view and you see gallery view and then there's speaker view speaker view now I'm on speaker view mm -hmm. And then do you see one person? Uh, I did for you. Uh, so am I correct in then that the speaker view means that whomever is speaking at the time, if it was you, I'll bring you forward to myself. Correct. Got it. Oh, I feel like I'm learning. Uh -huh. Technology goes faster than I do, and I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> wow. Huh. All right. This uh, the show large active speaker view. All right, I'm not going to do this. I'm very interested, and I'm not going to um, play with my computer right now. I will do use my my uh, technical learning curve for an, at another time. Is there something I can help you with, Annie? Is it what you wanted to do? Yeah. I think I'm going to just have the group view. Okay. Yeah. The gallery view. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for offering. Sure. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to be muted because we've got a lot going on in our living room right now. So I'm going to be muted, but I'll come in as needed and, of course, be listening and watching. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I was uh, nervous, I, I didn't, uh, I, I had a secret wish that the, the group will be small. And I got my wish. Nice. As I become more confident, the next time I'll I'll have I'll wish for many more people, and then I'll get that wish too. <laughs> so, uh, my my topic is, uh, of the night is uh, the five love languages by Scott Chapman, and uh, uh, I found this to be incredibly useful in my family. Uh, because uh, uh, there, there are love languages. The five. Do, do, does anyone? Do you all know what the the five love languages are? Scott does. Mm -hmm. And uh, but Scott's not talking. So Lee, Laura, do you know? Um, have you heard of the five I love languages. I've heard of the five love languages, but I would love it if you could um, tell me what they are because I forgot. Can you? You can. Yes? yes, please. So you know, you can't even name like two or one. 
Uh, oh, like one would be like um, uh, like somebody who gives service. Yeah, I'll, 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 my favorite love language is that one. It's called acts of service. Oh, it's my favorite, yeah, it's my favorite love language to give and it's my favorite love language to receive. Mm -hmm. And I'll do a second one and then I'll bail out again. And my second favorite one is touch, loving touch. Mm. Okay. All right, can I guess another? <laughs> Another I'm gonna write, one? I'm going to write these down so that I can keep my cheat sheet. Um, Absolutely. What's another love language? Um, can you guess a love language? Like there's service, touch. Um, and the reason why I, I, I ask you instead of just telling you is because people will come up first with their favorite one a lot, oh. a lot of the time. To listen. To listen. Yes. Oh, that's a great one. That's so quality time, quality time, or uh, kind words. Mm. Okay, so listen's not one of them. <laughs> and Scott, uh, yeah. Is, is listen one of them or not? Or is it my, my understanding is it's the way he describes it in the book is words of affirmation. So listening itself is not a love language, but quality mm -hmm. time is. Um, and words of affirmation, actually, again, it's love language. So when we receive words of affirmation, for many of us, that's a love language. We feel oh. loved when we uh. hold those things. So it's not just about communication, but it's, again, we feel, it's, the question is, when do you feel loved? Do you feel loved when you're receiving gifts? Do you feel loved when you're touching? Do you feel loved when you're receiving words of affirmation? Yeah. I see. So if one was receiving someone saying um, that they appreciate and they mentioned some qualities, that would be words of affirmation. Is that correct? That's mm -hmm. right. I love that one. Yes, yeah, so words of affirmation. And, and Scott just uh, actually dropped the other one was gifts. Words yeah. of affirmation, gifts. If I, could, if I could ask, so for me, the words of affirmation they have, for me anyways, to land, there's an empathy or there's an energy in it that I feel inside that's different than the words. And I'm curious if that is another love language, the energy that goes with it, or if that's part of the words of affirmation is what's implied in the energy that may be going on. It's curious. That's a, that's a really good question. Uh, it just occurred to me, uh, and I've forgotten your name, who's with Laura. Yeah, I'm Lee. David. 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 Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget. Ah, <laughs> you're so cute. You're doing <laughs> wonderful, Annie. You're doing wonderful. I led the group um three three times ago or whatever, and it was very nerve wracking. So I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Laura. Well, I think we're all on your side, though. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. This is so great. Yeah. This is really great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so David was, was just talking about uh, when David said uh, listening, it just occurred to me that, wow, that doesn't fit in, in its own. And uh, so the, the compassion that we talk about is could be its, its own kind of uh, love language, but it's not in Gary Chapman's five, you know? Yeah. And some people have knocked around with, well, there's some, some ways that I express love that doesn't fall into the, the five, but... Uh, you know, he wrote the book. And, and, uh, and yeah. so when we talk about the five love languages, the basics, and then there's the additional ones that, that yeah. we come up with. But I love listening and compassion. I think those are wonderful. And we could put that in your book. Okay, put that yeah. in my book. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Yes. Well, I'll talk about my book later. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, thank yeah. you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, uh, so of the five love languages, did do you have them written down? Did you write them down? Did you get them all, Lee? I'm not sure. I can I review them with you what I've got? And see if I've, yeah. I've only got four. I've got I've got touch. Yes. And I have acts of service. Yes. And I have quality time. Yes. Words of affirmation. Quality time. Together. Words of affirmation. Okay. And then gifts. Gifts. 
Ah, gifts. Gifts. Okay. So this is the slide that I have now that you put in the blank. Right. Right. Okay. Well, the uh, the five love language is hit me uh, really deeply because my lowest love language is gifts. In fact, I I don't trust gifts. I found out when people give me gifts, it's more of an obligation. Hmm. And uh, it it never made sense to me. And I found out uh, that these love languages are seem to be really ingrained because my uh, son, Hunter, his love language is gifts. Mm. And when he was small, you know, he would just bring me things and hand them to me. Here, mommy. And, mm. and we had a box that, that had wrapping paper on it. So, and it was a game we played, but it was something that he would do to take something that I would like very much that, you know, some of my favorite possessions and put it in the box because young children don't own anything themselves. But everything that they touch, that everything they can reach is theirs, right? Right. And he would put it in the box and bring it out to me wherever I am. And I would get angry with him. I didn't know what, why he was doing that. Like, that's just aggravating because I don't want my car keys when I'm gardening and have no pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh... And then he was not reliable at putting something back. Mm. And I was not reliable at remembering something that's out of place. So I went through years of, of having things be lost. My favorite things that are, were effectively lost a lot. <laughs> and, uh, Wow. And it wasn't until later on when I found out about, the, you know, learned about the, the love languages and Hunter was older and was able to have a, a talk mm. that uh, he remembered. He actually remembered feeling very hurt because he was from his heart actually wanting to give me something and, and have a contribution. And I w met his, his precious gift of love with anger. Oh. and resentment and it was after that when we understood this is the way that we we really enjoy receiving love that i i apologized and and we we uh you know moved through that and and he was able to uh i don't know to to adjust to that mm -hmm. and then since then we've talked about the love languages for uh, for you know, the, the rest of their, their lives so far. Mm -hmm. um, I read that in order to check to see if somebody has gifts, you really can, I can really give the person who has, has gifts as their love language literally anything and explain to them why, I, I thought. And, and the, the deal is with uh, gifts is you were thinking of me while you were away. I have found a one of those shiny pieces of plastic that that people have sewn onto costumes mm -hmm. on the ground, and it was blue. And Hunter's favorite color is blue, and and I I just picked it up and I said I'm going to test this because I really like experiments. And I, I brought it to him and I said, Hunter, I saw this today and I thought of you, and that's the that's the phrase that that gets them like. <gasps> I saw this and I thought of you and I brought it to you. I said, because it's shiny and blue, just like you are. Aww. And he carried that around for, for, you know, a week and a half before he lost it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really special to him. And anything, anything is like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. What happens in, in some couples is uh, uh, one person, likes quality time and the other person likes service mm -hmm. and if they're not aware then the person is doing services you know uh, for the other mm -hmm. and the person who is receiving the service isn't actually receiving them 
they were actually feeling a little resentful because you're not spending time with me. Mm -hmm. You're just doing stuff. Yeah. So it's great that, that Scott knows that Scott likes to give and receive service and touch primarily. And so I know now that uh, you know, if I bring Scott a gift, it uh, better be pretty useful. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, it's, it, I, I really want to just riff for a moment on what Annie's saying. It's like really sure. learning what people, and so Emily knows that if, she, if she's making, when she makes meals for me, which is every day when we're together, or when she rubs my head, boy, I'm in heaven because it's, they're both acts of service. And then if she's rubbing my head, it's an act of service and it's loving touch. So, I mean, I'm over the moon when it's that, you know, so. It's nice. Yeah. So I'm curious uh, about uh, uh, you, Laura, David, and Lee. What, what, uh, do you have any ideas about what does it for you? I, I don't think, um, we're not thinking. Well, I would have to say acts of service. You know, it, it would be hard not to be wowed at how many acts of service that Laura gives to me. Um, she's just the epitome of service, <laughs> you know, and whether it's through cooking or cleaning or touch or communication or, you know, something like that. And um, or attention, attention, there's lots of attention, and lots of uh, we do a lot of uh, appreciation, we do a lot of that, yeah. Um, I know, yeah, and so I know that quality time for us, um, I read to her every night, mm. and so well, you know, we have our, our routines at night where I'll, I'll make us some hot tea, some chamomile tea and we'll get in bed and I will read to her. And we've gone through so many books and it's so much more, uh, it's so much more fulfilling to read a book together with someone mm -hmm. and, and then do, you know, rift on, on what we heard or what we just read and, you know, those types of, it just makes it so much more interesting and it's so much more um, fulfilling. And that's an act of service, yeah. right? Yeah, because, and then, like, if David gets a little annoyed with me, he, like, tries to take away the reading, and I'm like, oh, don't, you can't, just one page. <laughs> but I, you know, I. Yeah, so that's a quality time end of, end of. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I try, you know. <laughs> you know, he. he well, actually, I, I don't know. Is it more of a, a time or a service? If he got the, uh, the, the book in audio book form and said, okay, sit here and, and press play and, mm -hmm. and you leave the room. Yeah, that wouldn't be It's get probably it. the, the quality time. And um, there's like, I mean, I know this is probably its own category, but devotion. And um, yeah, we get really, I get really freaked out if he tries to take it away, you know? And it's so funny, you guys, sometimes he's so tired. <laughs> yeah, the, the expression of it. falling asleep. Oh, yeah. But he's still trying. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like I'm really? slurring my paragraphs. <laughs> the like shit doesn't care, I'm just like trying. he's drunk, <laughs> but he's not. He's like, uh, nah, nah. <laughs> Yeah, but we're well, we're We're committed. Committed. Should be committed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, but I, you know, I love, I love the, the acts of service, you know, just doing things, um, helping with the dishes, folding laundry, mm -hmm. um, you know, those types of things and things that I've learned from my marriage, my previous marriage, um, things I could have done better. You know, I took, I took the lessons from there and have applied a lot of them to to this relationship. And what, if, so, what if every one of these, like we do a lot of touching, we do tons of acts of service all day, and um, we do a lot of quality time and affirming, and we do gifts. I mean, I would say I probably give more gifts than David. That's just 
I mean, just like gifts, but. Well, I'm a little, you know, it's interesting that you brought up the whole gifts thing. And uh, in my, in my marriage, my ex-wife, I would buy her, things. you know, gifts and things. And she just, she just wasn't, didn't appreciate him, wasn't, you know, interested. And I. How just, did you feel as a result of that? Um, terrible. I was hurt. Mm. You know, because um, I was buying her these nice jewelry or, or things like that, and it just wasn't, you know, it just, she just wasn't a big things person. It was more about quality time. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so I kind of just shy away from now. I'm not a big gifts guy, you know. I don't, yeah, and I'm like, mm. Yeah, I don't try to learn, so I'm kind of scarred there. I'm kind of scarred there because I'm afraid to have to relive that feeling again. I'm afraid to um, buy the wrong gift and feel that angst. Uh, oh, why did you even bother? Right. Why? Right. You know. So that's that's a that's a veil of past pain for me. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it feels like you're you're personally rejected from from uh, the person just not having that uh, that inclination that that's just not how they they uh, interpret yeah right how is it for you knowing that oh just some people they don't they don't uh, register that that's about love at the time you took it personally right at the time it was very personal yeah but right now uh, thinking back on it uh, what's it like, you know, just uh, realizing, oh, oh, it's just how people really are wired that way or not. So someone who's not a gifts person, when they receive a gift and they don't know about the love languages, then they just might turn out to have a, a reaction that's not as, as warm as, and, and as receiving of, of the love as, as they might otherwise. Yeah, I mean, you know, she was not happy about a diamond ring that I bought her. She was just like, eh, you know, this is nice, thank you. But man, I bought a trampoline and she about flipped out. So, I mean, I guess it's just about hit and miss on what it is, it's about what it is. Uh, yeah. But I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying and I'm, I'm having a challenge processing that, honestly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it can go either way. Yeah. So I was just curious about you know what that what, what that was like for you. Yeah, it sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what advice would you give to Laura about uh, about you and gifts? Because I heard Laura uh, talking about you know actually she said a sentence. Did you did did I hear that correctly? That you would yeah. actually enjoy receiving gifts. Yes, I, um, so my, the gifts for me, you're right, I would, they, they like, they, they come out as little, um, devotional things, like, it would just be like a love note under my pillow, or a, you know, and he's been doing more of that lately, because I've been able to communicate it in a loving, compassionate way, what would make <laughs> me happy, and, uh, there you go. stuff like that, um, Maybe even just a fl some flowers once in a while and just uh, romantic notions. I like a uh, loving text, you know, just a text message. And, we do um, a lot of that. Yeah. And so we, we uh, but I have a communicated that to him. But I don't, I, I don't think I like, like a lot of like, um, I feel uncomfortable like with gifts, but um but I love the spirit behind giving something. I, so I think I am, that's one of my languages. I like the spirit of like thinking about the other person, right? Like, and yeah, so that's, <laughs> and I remember when I was a little girl, I always brought my mom something like what, even if it was honeysuckles, you know, like uh, I would pick them cause they, uh, they smelled so good. And I would be like, mom, mom. And I would give her honeysuckles or I would buy her her favorite knick-knack or something well we do we do flower friday yeah well there you go we do flowers on friday but i'm really curious and this is probably stepping ahead but how do you know your love language how do you get to know that well you can tell i when i uh, meet somebody and i i uh I talk to them the the love language that they uh 
if they know the love languages, the, the one that they forget when the, in the list is probably near their bottom. Mm. The first one is their, the first one they name is off in their top. I, I will test somebody mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, with the gifts, I will actually find an opportunity to give them something very small. Mm -hmm. And with the phrase, I saw this and I thought of you. Mm. And I watched the, whether they glow or not. Mm. Um, I just will test each one mm. when I'm working with somebody else. Because uh, on, if you go Google online, five love languages quiz, you can get those okay. yourself. Okay. And that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, but how do you, how do I uh, figure out with other people? Right. Yeah. So yes. people who uh, ask for hugs upon meeting uh, are much more likely to be uh, touch oriented. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So yeah. just uh, listen and, and notice for, for clues and yeah. then just as I get to know someone, I'll even ask. I'll bring up the five love languages, and people will volunteer. Okay. But actually, what you guys do seems really great because you do all five. Yeah, and I think that it's interesting because when you become, um, you know, more conscious, right? Like in your life or your relationship. Um, then you can integrate, you know, in, in a, on a healthy level, like um, when you notice that, you know, because I've been in partnerships where people are less touchy or they're very, you know, I understand what you're saying. It's just so weird. He and I are like, like frag. we're like twins in the way that we both thrive, attention, connection, uh, touch all the time. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go through most of them. I mean, we get through all of those in a day. It's a good day. And it's not, you know, yeah. not, in most relationships I've been in, it's not such a match like that. Yeah, you're, yeah, you seem to be doing that pretty well. <laughs> well, can we move on? to? I'm, uh, I'd like to see what uh, the others, I, that yes. we have a new person. Mm. And I don't know who that is. Scott, can you help me out? Aslan, Darian? Um, I'm not seeing uh, her camera's off, of course. So Aslan, if you can hear us, would love for you to, I guess, it's hard to see. Um, She's there, it's just in the shadows. Very dark. Um, Osl I'm assuming it's Aslan White, who's a longtime friend who used to come to some of my classes at Harbin Hot Springs. <coughs> and she's very okay. involved in protecting wolves. It is at Oslan. Thank you. It is. It's a little dark because we are on solar batteries. We're out in the outback of Taos. And so it's literally dark where I am. We have flashlights. <clears throat> we could probably light up our faces with flashlights. <laughs> that would be uh, kind of cool. I think oh, there you are. Oh, there it is on here. We'll actually light our... We're totally off grid. So um, we're in the dark, but let's see if you can see us. But hi, thanks for welcoming hey, us. Yeah, welcome. Good to see you. You are so, you are so committed. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm impressed. see me. I look like a ghost. <laughs> well, I wanted to, to ask Lee. Yeah. Lee, do you have any uh, thoughts about what uh, your primary love language is? You heard. Well, for me, it's, it's less about the love language categories, and it's much more about the energy that's in it. And I find that the energy is, you know, all of those five have an underlying, you know, what is the energy that's behind the act? Right. And that's it. Absolutely. For me. And it can be, it can be touch, it can be words, it can be any of those things because I get it at a level that's beyond the physicality of what's going on. If, if there isn't the energy behind it, then the acts are going to fall I will go into a place of empathy where I'm going to be curious about what the other is trying to accomplish or bring. And I'll start going out of them, you know, where the love is, because I'm not going to get it just from the acts. Maybe right, I, right. Well, and I, and I, I don't think I do. 
I, that, it, I that if there is an actual true. love behind the act, then then the the act falls flat. For, well, sure. for me, it, for me, it doesn't land. It's more of what I think you were talking about with the gift that was coming that wasn't the gift that uh, was convenient for you. Then there's the opportunity to connect with your son and be curious about what the energy is behind the keys that are showing up in the garden, and then you can get it. But the actual keys showing up, that's not, it's, it's what's behind it. Right. And I think what I heard is that the energy became irritating and aggravating when you didn't understand what was behind the, the physical it's, act. Exactly. That's exactly for right. Me, for me, what that's saying is it's not about the act. It's about what's the energy underneath it. Yeah. It's not acts of kindness. It's not gifts. It's not touch. It's not words of affirmation. It's not any of those things. It's the energy underneath it, and then the the physicality of it is just a vehicle, or it's a it's a uh, representation for what's behind it. And so, for me, I don't have five languages because there are too many different ways that the energy can be expressed, and I I find myself constrained in the love language model, and it doesn't resonate for me. Actually, <laughs> I have to tell you that it just doesn't. Uh, I find that you don't have preferences. I I find that there are preferences because, for instance, if it's a touch intention and the touch is unskilled, I find myself having to navigate the unskilled touch, even if there is an energy of love and intention behind it, because there isn't the skill behind the touch, because of my own personal history and childhood and infancy and the rest of those things in my life, Unskilled touch for me is something that's very challenging to receive. Yeah. Even if the energy is clean behind it, if I have somebody that lovingly comes and hangs on me in an embrace rather than supporting themselves and meeting me, I find that uh, even though I love hugs, I'm not into people hanging off of me for their own support, you know? <laughs> So the energy can be really clean, and yet the uh, skill level of bringing the energy forward um, can make it so that I go into a caretaking mode where I have to go into an empathetic place to try and help them to find their own energy, to find their own support, so that they can step up to where I can actually receive the gift. And you find that to be a challenge? I find if I'm receiving keys in the garden, that I have to go into my empathetic giraffe place. I right. have to put energy into it to receive. I think there's a gift coming my way. I have to be curious about what's the energy behind the actual keys that are showing up and the timing and the rest of that. And I may have to go through a curiosity, empathetic line of nonviolent or compassionate communication to say, I, I recognize the keys coming into my space. That's really interesting to me, and I'm just curious. I'm curious of how, how it is that you're bringing keys to me. What's up around that? I'm, I'm really wanting to know. But yeah. I'm, I'm having to put energy into empathy to get their gift. And I find that if, you know, if that becomes something that is habitual with a partner, for instance, I find out that I'm actually losing energy in receiving the gifts if I have to go into empathy mode every time, and there's not a balance. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the five languages. It's all about the energy for me. The five languages just don't even resonate for me at all. I come back to the model of compassionate communication every time. I'm sorry, but that's that model and the model. What if somebody is uh, unskilled in in uh, giving compliments? If or, they're un if they're or, or, kind, or you know, or acts, if, if a person is also unskilled in uh, words of affirmation. Well, again, for me, then it has to be a negotiation with myself of how big my empathy well is. And if there's a propensity that I have to go to my empathy well each time there's unskilled, then I have to figure out what my relationship with this person is and figure out if I'm going into caretaking mode habitually with this one or if it feels like there's an energetic exchange that's sustainable. And there may, be, there may have to be a tough conversation that I love that you want to give me gifts. I think that's the most amazing thing for me to receive gifts. Yes. And I'm finding it challenging to receive this many gifts 
and I actually have to ask for a pause in the gifts because I just I can't continue to receive the gifts in the way they're coming to me. I, I'm full. I'm full. <laughs> right, right, right. I'd like to come in for a moment because I think yeah. I'm really appreciating what Lee has expressed. I and, am. Yeah. And one of the things that I like about it is a reminder that no system is for everybody. Yeah. There's no belief system. There's no, including what I teach, you know. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, it, it's just like what we eat. You know, there's some foods that will land great with me and they won't sit well with Annie. Um, and so, you know, I'm just really appreciating that it's fun to play with astrology or the five love languages or, you know, the, the Enneagram or any, any of these things. They're fun. But let's not make a religion out of it. And let's recognize that, you know, it's fun. It's playful. We can learn from ourselves about it. They're beautiful mirrors to reflect in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and everybody's going to have their own unique relationship to it. So that's just kind of what came up for me, listening, you know, on the bigger scope and then very specifically in terms of what Lee was presenting. Yeah, that's a good point. What happens when we talk about love languages, we're wanting to be receptive and receive love and recognizing that in order to really relax and receive love, there needs to be certain conditions for it to be authentic. So I'm really, that's something else that I kind of derived from what you shared, Lee. Right. Yeah, for me, it's more recognizing that there are different strategies for meeting the needs. And if there's a need for love, there are these different strategies. And <clears throat> for me, I'm not limited to five. Right? Well, and what about I, in giving? Well, in giving, for me, I, I, I am, uh, let's see, if I was to go down the list of the ones that I don't engage in because they're just not feeling as authentic, Gifts as gifts, not my thing. Um, if I can give something in a way where it's helpful to someone and uh, it comes from the need for me for their own well-being, great. But if it's a holiday and it's a program thing because this is what we do, and if it's roses, I love roses and I love to give those. And yet, for me, it's more, is the gift coming from a place where I'm meeting my own need for connection? And I think that that's the big one, is whose need are we meeting with this gift? When the keys are given in the garden, whose need is really being met? Who's the gift for? I think it's very often for the one that's doing the giving. Right. I've got to give a, a, an example of that that just happened last week. We had a big birthday party for Emily. And there is a guy who's part of the, it was down in San Diego, and there's a, a gentleman who is kind of part of that community. And he's in his late 60s, and he's a little bit lonely. He's, he's single. And so he sends me this text message saying, I have a great gift for Emily. <clears throat> I want to, at a key moment in the party, I'm going to pick her up <clears throat> and give her a big hug and carry her over and put her on the couch and lay a big kiss on her. And then stand up and after I've dommed her really well, walk away. And I was like, that's a gift for Emily? It sounds like <laughs> a gift for you, man. You know, and he was checking in with me to get my approval. And it was like, no, sorry, <laughs> it does not feel good to me at all. And it sounds like it's a gift for you and not necessarily a gift for Emily. And then I checked in with Emily and she was like, yeah, that's definitely not a gift that I'm excited about. So anyway, just that just happened a week ago today. So it's a, a good example of that. Well, and the thing I noticed in that again, Scott, is that essentially I think I think that you're having to go into a place of empathy to be curious about what's what's the need for this person again. Right, you're so. actually having to go into caretaking mode to yeah. to discern what's going on there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So and I, and I, I can have empathy. He's lonely. Yeah. She's beautiful. He's got a fantasy. I mean, clearly he's got a fantasy about doming the beautiful blonde. Yeah. You know, he's probably heard Emily talk about how she likes to be domed. So yeah. who knows how many fantasies she's, he's run about. Oh, that. right. You know, right. So anyway, we have to be careful what we publicly state. Because <laughs> we never know who's listening and then how they're going to take it and run with it. And I was going to just let people know, I'm going to be stepping out in a short time, but I, I wanted to name that one for myself. 
Yeah, thank you, Lee. Yeah. And thank you for being curious, Annie. But from a from an from a compassionate communication standpoint, I'm just curious how it is for you receiving my what feels to me like a very impassioned, energetic uh, defense of my way. And I'm concerned that it sounds like this is a model that means a lot to you. And I really want to hold that in a careful way and and see how you're doing with all the stuff, especially as you're leading the group for the first time. None of that again. Well, thank you, Lee. I, I think that uh, uh, that landed on me uh, really nicely. I actually resonated with you uh, uh, with the, uh, uh, the unskilled touch. I was, yeah, I, I, if I were uh, actually a participant and not leading the group, I would have grabbed my notebook and I like started writing down your notes, you know, like uh, the phrases that you had said because it was so well formed. Oh. I guess, uh, uh, are we being recorded? It says recording up in the top. Yes. So maybe I'll. So is this is all being recorded, so go back and watch it. I definitely want to, if it's okay with you, Annie, I want to share it with our mentorship group and, yeah. you know, put it up there so people can uh, watch it because it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was a, a really good point about uh, unskilled touch and then uh, how well you, you uh, went into uh, unskilled uh, uh, gifts and unskilled words. Or I, that's what, where my mind went anyway. Uh, I don't know. What, now I have an incomplete memory of what exactly you said. But I was uh, very interested in, in uh, what you were saying. And, and that's absolutely true. It's like, um, uh, yeah, people who do uh, acts of service for me, but don't do them well. Uh, well, and there, if I can share, they're... they're yeah. There's some other words out there that uh, come from some other models, and uh, one of the words that I've heard used is tolerating. Yes. And there can be a there can be a level where we're willing to participate. It's not our favorite, and yet we're still willing to participate. And it can get to the level where we're actually in a place of tolerating, and it may get to a point where it's beyond tolerating. And so, um, but I I can clue you in on where that one came from, that model that I really resonate with, if you're curious. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Do you have a link? Uh, well, if you were to look for Betty Martin. Yes, yeah, I know. I study with Betty Martin. So Betty has a wheel of consent. I got that. Yep. And one of the words that she uses, and, and she has this, she talks about tolerating that you know, we can we can be in a place of receiving where it's more for the person that's bringing the gift than it is for us, and we're tolerating the energy that's coming at us. Exactly. But it's for them. They're the ones. They're doing the giving, and it's really for them. They're the keys coming in. It's really for them. It's not for you. And you're told yeah. you've got keys in the garden now. I was thinking of uh, you know, uh, another time of uh, you know presenting that that work too. Yeah. But the, the thing that uh, I wanted to, to move on to for this is uh, talking about uh, self-love. Because, uh, you know, as one of the things that uh, really attracted me uh, with uh, Scott when I, I met him in, uh, in Falls Church, Virginia, was his story about how the most important thing, or we are... We are on this earth to learn to love ourselves so that through that we can love others. Did I say that uh, well, Scott? Good. Yes. And I thought because uh, you know, so many people use uh, harsh words on themselves and I I I had decided early that uh, I I personally have enough people. I had a lot of people who were perfectly willing to say uh, hurtful things to me, and when I realized that I was saying hurtful things to me, I, I decided that you know I don't need to be one of them because they have that job covered. <laughs> yes. I, like so I thought that I was very good with uh, self love. And, uh, and I am actually, uh, 
I, I have a, a, a good self-concept. But when I uh, thought about this, uh, when I, I got, got sick, well, I mean, through lack of self-care, uh, I had made myself rather ill. And I'm now recovering and with better self-care. Uh, but it occurred to me that uh, uh, through the, the five love languages, I had a model of how to love myself. And as I go through, it's a handy little list for me to love myself in all five areas. And the one that I thought was oh so great, you know, getting a little, a little egoic about it even, because I, I do uh, have positive self-talk. So I, I, I do. As far as the uh, words of affirmation, I do very good self-love. Okay. As far as, uh, you know, physical touch, I, I have, you go to my closet, it's a very luxurious experience <laughs> to touch all my clothes. I don't have scratchy things or, or heart, you know, stuff like that, that piece. But what was missing for me there is acts of service for myself. That I haven't been doing the things of service, such as uh, uh, taking the time to eat right and uh, you know taking myself out. I, I wanted to uh, have different uh, self care habits that I that I neglected and then I get the results, the natural results of the neglect. So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, uh, your thoughts with, with regards to uh, maybe do a self check about, wow, uh, have a, you know, to check in, in with yourselves about uh, do I, how do I energetically, self-give I don't know I have no idea whether that was clear I get it I, I love it I, yeah. I, really, I really love what I just heard you share and it actually resonates really strongly in me the different ways that you were naming that for yourself and mm -hmm. um, I when it's interesting for me my negation of the model all of a sudden got flipped around on its head because I just heard how the model can be used and uh, one can be accountable to themselves. I love it. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I, I like the direction you've taken it. And I'm going to go quickly because Emily has just made a delicious dinner. And it is 8.24 p.m. And I am ex tired and super hungry. Yummy. Uh, yummy, yummy. Yeah. So. Um, I appreciate you're your still leading the, the yeah. group. Yeah, and I definitely, well, well, you're leading, and you're doing a great job, Annie. I great just, job. I do great job. Awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. You. You're doing a great job, Annie. And I, and I like how you handled the curveballs that lead through your way. I thought you handled those curveballs quite well. That's always great. the mark of a good hitter. How do they handle the curveball? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in terms of self-love, um, it's, it's a really good question, and... You know, for me, learning, I also am one of those people, I'm very picky about who I let touch me. Um, I don't like cuddle parties. I don't like people pawing me. I'm really picky about who I let touch me. Um, and so learning to ask for loving touch from Emily it took me a little while to, to do that. It still is an act of self-love to, this morning I was like, I said, no, before we get out of bed, I want you to rub my head a little bit, the big head. Um, and, uh, um, and then she was almost done. I said, up nope, one more minute. And that for me was actually an act of self-love to ask her a little more loving touch, I gotta say. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, and- Do you ever do your, like your own like- Oh, I rub my own head all the time. Uh, every okay. day, every day I'm rubbing my own head. But there's nothing like having Emily or somebody who really loves me and that I feel safe with rubbing. Because then I can really drop into receptivity and you know, receive. Sure, um, sure. And I, I really appreciate acts of service and I'm learning more and more to, to ask. So for me, learning to ask for the things that I like. I'm not big on gifts. You know, when I do get a gift, I appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, quality time, I spend my whole day, I get paid to provide quality time. So it's not that important to me, to be honest, because I, I have like quality time all day long with people. Um, and then what's the last one? Um, 
Words of affirmation. Yeah, that's important to me too. Yeah, that's definitely important to me. So anyway, I will watch the last part of this um, and I'm gonna go have dinner. Thank you so much, good job. And thank you, Laura, David, and Lee for joining us. Give our love to Emily. Um, I will. I have a traditional question first. Yeah. So uh, then will you be around to you know, turn off the, uh, the video? You or actually, you you're, come back? you are a co-host. And so if you guys do finish, uh, I won't be long. I'm just going to be having dinner for like 20 minutes. But if you guys finish beforehand, uh, mm -hmm. if you take a look down, you should be able to see where you can stop the recording. And you can the also leading. end the meeting. Do you see down? If you take your cursor all the way down to the bottom, uh, see where it says stop recording and also where it says end meeting as co-host. Do you see that? I actually don't because okay. I have a record okay. or, or stop recording. Okay, yeah. So you can stop recording. No, but I just did stop recording in in my computer. Mm. Um, did you? So I don't know. Could, could it I says have recording here? It's still recording it's on my still end. Still recording. Still says recording. You know what? I'll I'll come back in twenty minutes. Okay. Enjoy your dinner, Scott. Okay. Bye bye. And thank you, Scott. I'm going to be heading out here in about a minute too. So I really yeah, and David's got to go as well. Yeah. But I'm staying. Okay, so if we could have a, a chat that will be recorded and other people can see. Okay, and I just want to say one thing to Lee and to David. So one of the things I heard recently at a meeting about self-love and self-care and knowing how to do that, and I'm just going to say to you, Annie, is I heard this amazing metaphor of that people who are in my life only are given from me on the saucer of the cup and saucer because if my and because my cup has to be overflowing with my own self-love mm. and then what everybody else gets is what's on the saucer because that's what's overflowing from me so for me it was an inspiration to want to mm -hmm. give myself more self-care because it's like putting the mask on if you don't put the mask on you don't really have you're not available and you can't so that was a, a good inspiration for me. That's beautiful. I love the analogy. Thank you so much, Laura. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, you guys. So good night, Lee. It was really great connecting with you again. Yes, Lee. Thank you, thank you Dave. Yes. You and uh, Annie, I just, you know, one of the things I wanted to say was, you know, the flip side of that, you know, uh, just a little peek into my world. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Is, you know, you talk about the self-deprecating um, vernacular. Mm. And the interesting thing is I grew up in a world where you end up wearing that like a badge. Like, oh, yeah. no going to beat me up like I will. I'll show you how to beat me up. Mm -hmm. And I will, you know, and it got into a, a habit, a very, very bad habit, where I sort of wore it like a badge of honor. Mm. And that is, that's why this work is so foreign to me. And, uh, but I'm. You said foreign? Foreign. foreign. Yeah, just like yeah. all the Love the, Coach Academy the, stuff. The Love Coach Academy stuff, yeah. I mean. It's different. It's different than what you knew before. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, I, I kind of knew about them, but it definitely wasn't my way of life. Mm. You know, sadly enough. But I'm here now. It wasn't mine either. Yeah. 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 So, so I'm here now. And I, um, it's, it's wonderful. The way you have um, proposed and, and, and uh, delivered this workshop tonight was absolutely harmonious. I, wanna, I would just want to appreciate you for that. Mm -hmm. I think you. Thank you. you My ego is very happy. Yeah. <laughs> You have engaged. And I feel the love. I do feel that energetic peace, yes. Oh, yeah. You have engaged with everybody and connected with everybody so personably and so lovely. I just want to appreciate you for that. Mm. I learned a lot. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. You deserve, you deserve what you're feeling right now. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I can't follow on any more than just to revel in yeah. watching you receive what Dave just shared. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I feel really great watching ah. you. Ah. 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 
<laughs> twinkle, twinkle. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay. Uh, <laughs> you out and, and just to say, Annie, it, it's a powerful thing to hold a space for the length of time that you're holding it and to hold it in a good way. That's a high level skill. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, so um, I'm going to stay with you, Annie, and then David's going to um, hit the road. Yes. Okay. Lee, good to see you again. Just give me one second, Annie. I um, just got to give David something. All right. She'll be back. I can do a commercial break or something like that. I can talk about whatever I want. Oh, well, this is really awkward, and I love that. So I'm wondering whether Scott will actually uh, uh, cut this off or whether he will just have me sit here and awkwardly talk to people as I, as I go on. However, uh, I have been to Zoetic Workshops this, uh, this weekend and also last weekend. I've been doing a lot of workshops lately. Um, and one of the pieces that I've been working on is making myself uh, available to the public, like being seen for real. So mm, this is a, an interesting opportunity for me to just uh, talk about the, what's on my mind. I've been, uh, I, I've made a, a, a uh, uh, I made a self challenge to uh, have uh, an hour and a half of, of meditation every day uh, over two sessions at least and then also to do permission conversations. I'll, I'll maybe be talking about permission conversations later. Uh, this is and then to report on what I find out about myself and about the, the world through the uh, my expanded uh, uh, yeah, you know, personal permission to to be able to reach out and be seen in the world, and also uh, what I uh, receive in downloads uh, from the meditations. Yeah, today was very interesting. I actually meditated uh, in the bath for it was uh, it was two hours in the in the bathtub, more than that, and I, I've. Uh, received so much uh, ideas about what to do, you know, things that I can do to uh, make my life more interesting and to uh, reach out into the world and, and be a facilitator. I didn't think that Laura would be this long. Well, anyway, the other piece was to do Facebook Live videos. And I'm right now seriously appreciating uh, what it's like to do that kind of thing. And uh, Scott, I hope that you would actually cut this off at this point. And Laura's coming back. Right here. Just have a cup of tea. That was such an extremely awkward and interesting thing for me to just sit and talk to myself. Oh, you know, it's so good. Like I'm so sorry because I thought you were still talking to Lee. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm so sorry. That was crazy. That was awesome. What I did was I pretended that I was uh, doing Facebook Live. I've been doing personal work regarding getting up to Facebook Live and, uh, and doing Facebook Live uh, uh, reviews daily about my personal progress. Oh, good. You know, I was going to say, I've done um, quite a few Facebook Lives. I don't know if you and I are friends, but you could go back and look at them. Um, but it, we've also, we also started a YouTube channel, and we've been just posting a whole bunch of videos up on that about our product, you know, and, um, but it's been an interesting practice just to, you know, not care about what other people think, right? Like when you're talking. It's not an easy thing. How did you do? Uh, you Honestly, mean I, I, I'm very interested in 
our, well, our topic. I'll tell you, so, I'll tell you what, what's really inspired me was um, there's a comedian, and you might want to write down his name. His name is Kyle Cease. Yes, I just, I just found him. Okay, well, I've been listening to Kyle for like eight. That's where I got the, I love that. I'm, I'm yeah. actually so awkward, and I love that. Oh my God. So I was like, oh my God, she sounds like Kyle. I've been listening to Kyle seriously, like more than five times a day for, yes, like every, I have watched every single one of his videos, like every single one. And he has, he has taught me how to just get up and say, I have no idea what I'm going to say right now <laughs> because it levels the playing field and it just grounds, it grounds everybody into their humanness. Absolutely. And, and so I've been practicing that while I'm talking on my live videos, just going, you know, I don't know what I'm going to say. And I pause and I look around and I kind of wait. And as I'm a hypnotherapist, so one of the things that we've used that we mm -hmm. learned about, yeah, in our school, when in the, I went to a year long program and uh -huh. they taught us that if you pause, it's much more engaging for the other person's mind and to go slow and it's okay there's no hurry that yeah. people are more their minds are more drawn in so i thought you know what if i don't know what i'm gonna say i'm just gonna i'm just gonna riff like kyle does don't you love i love kyle I, what's your last name i i have oh eldridge e-l-d-r-i-d-g-e -E. um David was so inspired by Kyle because he's been listening to him for eight months as well, obviously, because if he's in the same house as me. Well, he emailed Kyle last night, like directly. Yes. And he said, I'm a Vietnam, I mean, a, a, a army veteran. And um, we were wondering if there was ways, there was a way to win tickets to your show. And, um, but he really just wanted to connect with Kyle. And he just wanted to let him know how much he's helped him in his life to um, be, the, be the apple tree and not care about what anybody else is making with their apples, that there's enough apples to go around and you don't have to overthink it. Yeah. They're your apples because you and I, Annie, can listen to the same message, but we're going to filter it completely differently. And that's your gift and that's my gift to whoever's listening that you're going to interpret something and, and then say it back to people who are in your audience different than I would. So that's why everyone's gift is unique. And that's what makes everybody amazing because everybody's got their own gift to share, even if it's the same intention or the same message. That's what I love about what Kyle teaches us. He, and because of Kyle on our product, um, I just want to show you real fast because um, it's kind of along the lines of what we're doing. But um, but basically, on the back of our card for Design Your Mind, it says, um, connecting you to your best self one thought at a time. So in other words, for you to connect to your best self, that's what our product uh, helps people do. And that was all inspired by Kyle. Cool. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's just way cool. Yeah, so it's so awesome. And he's, you know, we're launching this product and, and, and I didn't have a way to, to feel like I knew what I was doing, but he's given me the verbiage to know that I don't have to know what I'm doing. I can just do it. Right, and then it's the thing that you have to do, actually. Really? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's the thing that you have to do. And just like tonight, you leading this thing, and I did it a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, it's not, it's very unnerving for um, the human psyche, right, to do things that are new or awkward or um, today, David and I had to give a speech, and I didn't know until the last minute that I was giving a speech, and I just... <laughs> It's funny, I, I, I did this little trick in my mind. I, um, I just thought, well, we are um, we're all in a fishbowl and everyone's, everyone's the same and nothing's really happening. So don't worry about what anybody thinks. And I got up there and gave the speech. And it really, 
like Kyle, it really came from my heart. Like it really just, it was so, it, was, it came out beautiful because I wasn't worried about, and I felt nervous like you did though earlier. Like I, I felt nervous and then I just went, I just did it anyway. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, that, that's nice. Well, let's, let's uh, kind of uh, uh, go back to the love back to this because I, I am actually curious. You, you, you look like you had something to say about uh, uh, self-love and in the five love languages. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I just, uh, well, I grew up in a home where um, there was a lot of self-care and um, there wasn't a lot of attention to detail. Like my mom would say, um, Oh, I got to feed the kids at like 1030 at night. And there was four of us. And it wasn't because she didn't want to feed us. It just that she just forgot. Right. So, um, so I, I learned early on in my young adulthood to do a lot of self-care because I, I, I knew that that would make me feel safer. And, um, but, uh, but, and so I really, I really just, it's like an ingrained habit that I don't have much to give unless I do that self-care. So I do little rituals every day, like 10 so minutes. What do call that self-sourcing? Well, yeah, self-sourcing um, for me is a little bit different because it's in the moment when you like do that, what do I need in that moment when you're feeling that anxiety? And that's amazing. And I'm learning that as well. But, um, but the self-care thing is I just, I ingrain little ritualistic habits every day and they, all of them are just 10 or 15 minutes. So I just do 10 minutes of yoga when I first wake up, like um, I'll have a cup of coffee with me and then I do, and I listen to Kyle. So this is my little habit. I listen to Kyle while I'm stretching. So I do 10 minutes of stretching. That's it. But sometimes it'll go longer, but it's always at least 10 minutes. I have a mat that's already out. And then I, um, then I go right into my meditation and these are like rituals. And then, and then if I have to like run out the door, like first thing, cause there's an appointment then I make sure when I get back, I do the ritual. Like it just, so these are my little self care things that makes, that makes me like my cup is always pretty full. So, and then it runs over it. Then I can be of service to, um, to people I care about or even people I don't know. All right. So this is like a, a physical thing that you you had named and uh, uh, well meditation and the meditation yeah, is so, a quality time, huh? Meditation would be a quality time. Yes, meditation would be a quality time, right? Yeah, and then the physical thing would be giving the gift to myself to stretch my body and listen to Kyle. So yeah, that would be a physical and. Uh, Right. And what about uh, uh, some other ones? I, I'd like to actually, uh, uh, yeah, for my benefit too, uh, uh, maybe brainstorm some uh, uh, from all of the five love languages. Well, the words of affirmation, um, I, you know, that's part of our product. Uh, we, so when we see things like um, one of our, pr our product is what if it could be easy? So that's like, that helps my mind. So to me, that's like a word of affirmation, right? Like, what if whatever I got I have to do today could be easy? What if it could just work out easily? What if I could just, so I really love the words of affirmation. And, um, and then the sweet thing is, is David usually meditates with me. So I just make sure that just before we go in and we've already listened to our little mantra thing, I touch him. So I touch him and he touches me back and we do this for like probably 30 to 60 seconds. And then we let go. But each time we do it, we do that touch because it's like a signal that I'm good with you and you're good with me and let's go in, you know, into our, uh, our um, starry, starry night world. Yeah, do you sometimes use, uh, yeah, the cuddle mudra? Oh, yeah, the cuddle mudra, yeah. Oh, that's adorable, yes. I love that. And then you get, get all cut next in, into each other and then, and then meditate? Yep, we've done that. It's really, yeah, sweet. Yeah. So, so, yes, you, uh, yeah, have positive self-talk then. That's yes, um, I'm probably not as good as it as you um, have said that you practice, and I think it's an intention and practice. Um, but I have been doing the one thing lately with the self-talk is that, and I love it. Like, I'm having fear, and I love it. 
and I'm having, you know, this and I love it because I, I really want to get that habit of self love, like in, in a moment to moment basis, like you were talking about. That is, yeah, strangely magical. It's so magical. I mean, right. You know, it's like, I, and I do this and I love that. And I love that. I know. And I, I have a, I have a good feeling that a couple weeks in with that, we're going to be telling each other that we're, there's a bigger story, a different story going on in our minds. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I like to, you know, check back in, you know, six, or, you know, six weeks or so. I'm telling you, well, I have a feeling we'll check in before that you and I, but you know, I really well, I mean, specifically about, about this. And, and Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm so excited about it. Like, um, I've only been hearing that one. It's so weird. I've been listening to him for eight months, but I've only been hearing that one for like the last couple of weeks. It's, it's like resonating deeper with me. And so it's so funny that you, um, ready for it. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, right. So you got the, the, the touch, you got the, and um, gifts. Oh, the gifts. Yes. Um, the gifts, how do we, wait, I think David, are you locked out? David? I don't, I, th I thought he locked himself out, but I wasn't sure. Um, uh, the gifts, what are the Can gifts? I order anything, you know, uh, from Amazon. Uh, I uh, oh, I yeah. checked the uh, the gift thing and oh, yeah. I write myself a note. Oh, that's great! I and love it, that. And that's a, a word of that's a kind of self affirmation, and I do it very quickly, and uh, try. Then I forget about it. Oh, that's wonderful! And then when I receive the the package, I actually sit down and open it up, like, oh, what is this? And this is so great! And then. I talk about it like, oh, it's a, someone loves me. And then I read the note and then it's great. And I said, ah, this is just what I wanted. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> That's great. I really appreciate that. Yeah. That's a great thing to do. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Hmm. <coughs> yeah, you probably went down the wrong windpipe, right? <coughs> no, it's, it's like a, mm -hmm. like one piece of my throat went dry. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I was talking and then, oh, it's just very, extremely tickly. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, just, uh. Yeah. Try one sip. It's okay. Mm. How perfectly human. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. You have a beautiful smile. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> Mm. Yeah. Well, that's that's also uh, what I learned is uh, <coughs> yeah. My trick trick now would be to get someone else to talk for a while. Uh -huh. Well, um, you know, I can talk about um. Uh, well, I'm I'm really excited yeah, for the for the. The uh, languages, though. Yeah, so we went through gifts, words of affirmation, <coughs> quality time would be, you know, the meditation, right? And then acts of service. So and that was my blind spot. Oh, right. <coughs> right. Yeah, acts of service towards myself. Right, right. <laughs> you can see Emily in the background. <laughs> going back and forth. Is that Emily? I thought it was somebody else. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's some other, it's another blonde lady. Um, but anyway, um, okay. Yeah. Acts of service uh, towards ourselves. And, um, yeah. What, what do you think about that? My acts of service for myself are, um, like when I plate my food, 
and the way I make my food, I make it beautiful every time. Every meal, I act like every meal I'm on a date with myself because I just, you know, I always try to live life. I try to live life like you don't know if, I mean, it's kind of morbid, but it's like, you don't know when your last meal is. And I wouldn't want to not treat myself kindly. I also, um, I love being, I think I love being waited on at restaurants, but I don't like um, uh, uh, how the food makes my body feel because sometimes it's laden with butter and all kinds of stuff. Oh, so I, I try to prepare my food like with the same sort of, uh, feeling that I that you get when you're at a restaurant where it's really um tasty and beautiful and um David was so shocked because after three years of being together he's like you really do make every meal like like it says and I said yeah the time that's terrific yeah, so it's nice. So that's one way of acts of service. And I, you know, and then I just, um, I strategize to get a walk in every day, even if it's 10 minutes. Um, that's like for me, and I have a pet squirrel. Her name's uh, Jacqueline. And I get, get out there to feed her and uh, just, you know, connect with nature at like a little bit every day. Pet squirrel who lives outside who comes yeah. to you? Yeah, and she, like, like today I got her to cross the street, like, you know, I, I guided her across, and she, like, she comes, and she crosses the street, and she's so freaking cute. I'll post a picture of her on Facebook, um, but uh, we thought she was a boy, but um, we called her Jack, and then we saw her um, little nipples when she was uh, breastfeeding, so it's, we called her Jacqueline. Jacqueline. <laughs> she's really cute, um, but so it's just... It's those, you know, and I always tell people about the universe on, um, like, if you ever doubt the universe, all you have to do is look outside. All I have to do is look behind you right now and look at that beautiful plant. And I never doubt the universe. And, and like Kyle teaches us, and, you know, it, the, that plant grows beautifully and slowly. The plant doesn't say, am I okay? Is everything all right? You know, it, it's like, it, it doesn't say to you or me, hey, I, I better hurry up and grow. I better, you know, I better get this together. It just, it just grows slowly and beautifully and in its own time. And it becomes this beautiful bush that's so gorgeous behind you and it has all these different shades of green. And, you know, so that's, I always tell people, you ever doubt anything, just look outside. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's all. Bye. Hey, Scott. How was dinner? Awesome. Uh, What'd you have? Chicken, asparagus, mm. the asparagus, the chicken, and portobello mushrooms and spinach, all in a white wine sauce. It was quite yummy. That sounds amazing. It wow. was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, Emily's amazing. She's amazing. Aww. And how are we doing here? Are we good? Emily sounds a lot like me in the, I was just telling her how I, um, and I do this for David, but I plate every meal like we're in a restaurant because I just have a thing about um, what if it's my last meal? You know, like I always want my food to be plated and taste amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't love restaurants all the time because I just don't like what they put in the food all the time. Right, right, right. And I think I can make it taste better anyway, um, most of the time, and um, in a healthier way, you know. And um, so I just make every meal like it's a restaurant quality meal. Right. That's a, that's awesome. That's a really beautiful. That's a really cool way to approach it. Really cool. yeah, it's, it's, we were saying that it's a form of like it's an act of service to my, to myself, like it's self care, self love. Yeah. Well, I had the interesting experience of uh, mm -hmm. everybody actually left. And so I was here myself. And, uh, and so I practiced uh, like I was doing Facebook Live and jabbered on. And I thought she was talking to Lee still. So I was in the background, like, heating up my tea. 
And I thought, oh, she's talking to Lee. And then I came back and she's like doing like a Facebook live. Like it was pretty cute. We were cracking up. That is great. Thank you for doing it that way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It was good. It was great. <laughs> Yes, yeah. yes. It'll be interesting to have your your feedback on that. Uh, I definitely. I, I did. I, I did ask him. Well, maybe maybe Scott will just cut this part off. <laughs> I don't work for them or anything. Hold on a second. Okay. Their shit's good. Okay. That's cute. Yes, I, see, I, I just cut the. Very, I just uh, cut the very end of what she said. What did she say? Because I, I was uh, talking to Laura. Well, now we're just being totally casual. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you guys, I, I, I'm like multitasking, doing three things, and somebody was just doing a big promotion for us. So. That's awesome. <sighs> Uh, so I wanted to share with Scott real fast that thing about um, what I said about, um, I heard this thing where this woman said that the people in her life uh, 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 get the gifts from her from, her from a saucer and she's the cup. And, the, and when her cup runneth over, then she has more to give because of self-care. So she, I forgot how she worded it, but it was so beautiful. It was like, wow, you know, make sure your cup is really full. And then, and then you have so much to give as it spills into the saucer. That's a beautiful way of putting it, Laura. That's a really of, beautiful yeah, way. Yeah, I heard it the other day, and I thought, wow, that's a really cool way to think about it. That's a great way to think about it. And and notice when we're getting empty, and when we're getting, you know, once we're at halfway, it's like, okay, time to stop pouring and time to start filling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Annie. I, I, I want to thank you uh, so much for this wonderful job you did. And um, I'm going to post this. Laura, you're so good about always showing up and mm -hmm. participating. And um, I just am so grateful that both of you are a big part of my life and love Coach Academy life. Oh, we love you, Scott. I was just telling David, like, when you were doing all your stuff and you were, I said, Scott's so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I like hearing that. You're just, you know, you just have this way where you're just so relatable and I could just see you relate to everybody and you're just like, and it's just it's so cute to watch you like a little cute little human. Thank you. That, that means a lot to me because that's a goal of mine. I, it is really my goal, you know, like to, I, I, to me, a great day is when I've worked with totally different clients. Like I've got an 11 year old girl I work with, mm -hmm. you know, so when I work with my 11 year old and then I work with a couple and then I work with a corporate business person, I mean, I love diversity and. Uh, so thank you. That's a really, that's a really cool compliment. Thank oh, you. nice. Yeah. Well, shall we wrap this up? And uh, I'm going to at least stop recording and you guys okay. can continue to chat if you want, but this way uh, it'll be, uh, this will be the final recording. Let's, okay. let's twinkle Annie. Thank Yay. you, Annie. Amazing. Mm.